Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to show you how you can connect your MySQL server to your fast API. So let's begin. So for in the previous video, we discussed about how you can connect PostgreSQL server to our fast API. Now we're going to connect the MySQL server. So for the MySQL server, I've got a free server from freesqldatabase.com and you can also get that, uh, get a free server from here. So my credentials for my uh, server are these. So I'm going to connect to this database using fast API now. And then we're going to run some CRUD operations on that database. So let's begin. So for the MySQL URI, this is a, this is the standard format for connecting to a MySQL database. Uh, this goes something like MySQL plus PyMySQL semicolon slash slash. And this is the name of your host or the username. Um, this is actually your database name. The database name semicolon and this is the password for your application uh, for your server. And then we have the host name, which is this. Then the port name and this is the username. So that is how the format looks like for a URI string. All right, so let's move forward. So now we'll start the coding process and how we can connect to this database, uh, to this online database using our fast API. First of all, you need to install some requirements. So first of all, obviously you need to have fast API and Uvicorn installed to run fast API. And also you need to install PyMySQL to be able to connect to an online SQL server. All right, after you install that, let's begin the coding part. So first of all, I can simply import fast API from the fast API module. And then we can also import the SQL model and field uh, functions from the SQL model library. Then we can also, and yeah, one more thing, you also need to install pip install SQL model because that's what is required to declare models inside our fast API. Moving forward, we can also import create engine and session from SQL model itself. And now we're going to import some more utility functions from typing class, uh, from typing module. So that's going to be optional and list all right and we also have to import select from sql model which would be used to run select queries one more thing we can also import async context manager this is used for running uh, for basically running the startup or shutdown commands when your fast api boots up so basically every time your fast api boots up we're going to run the command of the create database which will actually create the database inside your uh, inside this file on the online server of our mysql database all right, so let's move forward. So now I'm going to declare an engine here. So engine is going to be create engine and MySQL URL. And we're going to set the echo equals to true. Now we can declare our class, which is basically the model or the table present inside, which is going to be inside the SQL uh, database. So that's going to be a standard data, uh, standard database class or table. So I'm just going to have one field as ID. This is going to be an optional because it is eventually going to be auto incremental and primary key. Then you can have name, which is as the string, price is float, its offer is bool with the, with the default value as false. All right, moving forward, we can now define a function which will create the database. So that's going to be something like SQL model dot metadata dot create all an engine. This will detect all the tables or the classes inside a file and then it will create the tables from them for them accordingly on the SQL server online. And now I'm going to use the async context manager for basically running this function every time our application boots up. So this is going to be an async function which is defined as lifespan and it takes the argument as the app instance we had created for our uh, fast API which, which we are going to create later on and also the create db and tables function is called at the startup after the yield you can write the shutdown function but we do not have any shutdown function for now so we can skip for that now we can declare the app which is going to be fast API with the lifespan parameter as the lifespan function we have declared above all right so now we can move on to building our endpoints for uh, our fast API. So first of all, I'm going to create and create a post endpoint, which is going to be app dot post items. So a simple uh, endpoint for posting to the fast API, and this is going to be a define create item function, which will take the input as the item object we have defined earlier, and that is going to just run it with the session dot engine as session, and then it is going to run the following commands, which is going to be session dot add the item to the database, and then committing the a query, and then refreshing the item to our database, and then we're going to return the item as a response now we can simply write another uh, get endpoint for this fast api so for this we can write the app dot get slash items itself and for the response model which is, will be the response format of this api endpoint which is going to be the list of the item model we have defined above so it is going to return a list of items all right so we're going to define read items here so with this another query for this is going to be with session engine as session obviously first we need to declare a session here and then the item is going to be session or execute and we this is the command basically so this is the command select item and dot all so we're going to select all the items from the item table so this is going to and then return it as a response here 
All right, perfect. So I think this should be enough for us to basically build this API and let's just test it out now. So for running this, we can run the command uvcorn main five semicolon app reload and then running this. All right, so as you can see, it has uh, printed some, some logs related to SQL database. Some, uh, and there's this command you can see which says create table item. So basically whenever our fast API boots up, it tries to create or find the table item here. So it has created this for the first time because I've booted this for the first time. So it has created the table named item. Perfect. And it is running completely. So application startup is complete. So now we can basically start hitting requests to this. So for now, I can go to the local, local port 8000 slash docs for getting the uh, this is basically called the swagger ui for fast api as you can see above so now we can see the two endpoints we have declared which is the get and post for items so first of all i'm going to post some items here to the database so i'm going to use try it out and then this is going to be one of the statements i will execute it all right so guys as you can see the query has been run successfully and it has returned the response body which is just the item object itself so that means it should successfully have transferred the data to our database as well so i'll just check my get request now and see if the data comes or not yes there it is now i'll post the request once more just to test another spring uh, another data entry so for the name i can just choose any name for the price i'll just take 10 and this time i'll keep it as true and now i'll execute this query so this again returned a 200 code and also a response here and now i'll again run the get query here and now i see two entries of our data inside our database and for uh, proof i have open the php my admin right here for my database online so i'll just refresh it and see if uh, the fields are populated or not all right so as you can see i've got two fields here id one and two which are the corresponding fields i had entered inside the post request at my slash items endpoint so perfect that means our app is working perfectly fine and that's how you can actually connect my SQL server to your fast api in few simple steps. So that's it for the video guys and thanks for watching.